Congressman Paul, you voted against the war. Why are all your fellow Republicans up here wrong? That's a very good question. And you might ask the question, why are 70% of the American people now wanting us out of there? And why did the Republicans do so poorly last year? So I would suggest that we should look at foreign policy. I'm suggesting very strongly that we should have a foreign policy of non-intervention, the traditional uh, American foreign policy and the Republican foreign policy. Throughout the 20th century, the Republican Party benefited from a non-interventionist foreign policy. Think of how Eisenhower came in to stop the Korean War. Think of how Nixon was elected to stop the mess in Vietnam. How did we win the election in the year 2000? We talked about a humble foreign policy, no nation building, don't police the world. That is a conservative, it's a Republican, it's a pro-American, it follows the founding fathers, and besides, it follows the Constitution. I tried very hard to solve this problem before we went to war by saying, Declare war if you want to go to war. Go to war, fight it, and win it. But don't get into it for political reasons or to enforce UN resolutions or pretend the Iraqis were a national threat to us. It's time. Should we change our constitution, which we believe is divinely inspired, <laughs> to allow men like Mel Martinez, the chairman of your party, a born in Cuba, great patriot senator from Florida, and Arnold Schwarzenegger to stand here some night, Governor Romney, uh, never given that a lot of thought, but uh, <laughs> with Arnold sitting there, I'll give it some thought, but probably not. No, no. <laughs> Congressman. Uh, I'm a no because I am a strong supporter of the original intent. Oh, God. Okay, Congressman Paul, Pete from Rochester Hills, Michigan, wants to ask you this. If you were president, would you work to phase out the IRS? Immediately. <laughs> it's what they call a softball. And, and you can only do that if you change our ideas about what the role of government ought to be. If you think the government has to take care of us from cradle to grave, and if you think our government should police the world and spend hundreds of billions of dollars on a foreign policy that we cannot manage, uh, you can't get rid of the IRS. But if you want to lower taxes, and if you don't want the government to quit printing the money to come up with the shortfall and cause all the inflation, you have to change policy. Time. Let's go to Dr. Paul, how do you reconcile this moral, moral uh, leadership kind of role of conservatism with the very libertarian strain of conservatism, the Barry Goldwater conservatism that you represent? How do you put together what he just said with what you believe in a unified national purpose? Well, well, you do it by an understanding what the goal of government ought to be. If the goal of government is to be the policeman of the world, you lose liberty. And if the goal is to promote liberty, you can unify all segments. The, uh, the freedom message uh, brings us together. It doesn't divide us. I believe that when we overdo our military uh, aggressiveness, what it does, it actually weakens our national defense. I mean, we stood up to the Soviets. They had 40,000 nuclear weapons. Now we're fretting day in and day and night about third world countries that have no army, navy, or air force, and we're getting ready to go to war. But the principle, the moral principle, is that of defending liberty and minimizing the scope of government. And I'm sorry, we have to go uh, on. We have to go on. Uh, Congressman Paul, uh, Bob Hussey from Minnesota writes that perhaps the most important skill a good president must have is the ability to make good, sound decisions, often in a crisis situation. Please cite an example when you had to make a decision in crisis. I wonder if he's referring to a political decision like running for office or something like that. Um, I guess in medicine, I made a lot of critical decisions. I mean, uh, you're called upon all the time to make critical life-saving uh, decisions. But uh, I, I can't think of any one particular event where I made a critical uh, decision that affected a lot of other people. But uh, I think all our decisions we make in, in politics are, are critical. My major decision, political decision, which was a constitutional decision, was to uh, urge Paul, for five years that this not country not go to war in Iraq. D Dr. Paul, that's all. Uh, Congressman Paul, Kerry from Connecticut asks, do you trust the mainstream media? <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> but uh, I trust the internet a lot more. 
and I trust uh, the freedom of expression, and that's why we should never interfere with the internet. That's why I have never voted to regulate the internet, even when there's the temptation to put bad things on the internet. Regulation of bad and good on the internet should be done differently. But uh, no, there's every reason to believe that we have enough freedom in this country to have freedom of expression, and that's what is important. And whether or not we trust the mainstream or not, I think you pick and choose. There are some friends so and some smart. aren't so friendly. Thank you, Doctor. It's time. We're at the last round. It's going to be 30-second responses. I want to start with Mayor Giuliani. Something uh, you've come out for, I believe. I want you to explain it and defend it. A national tamper-proof ID card. Yeah, I think that's uh, critical to having immigration security. Every single person in this country <clears throat> who comes in from a foreign country should be identified, should be in a database. It should be a tamper-proof card. I probably have the most experience in dealing with security. I had to take a city that was, had an out, 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 outlandish amount of crime and reduce it. So the, the very, very best way to sensibly create security is to have a tamper-proof card, a database, and then kind of back up from that. Well, how, how do we get there? Is someone against this on libertarian grounds, the idea of a national ID card? Dr. Paul. I am absolutely opposed to a national ID card. This is a total contradiction of what a free society is all about. The purpose of government is to protect the secrecy and the privacy of all individuals, not the secrecy of government. We don't need a national ID card. You think security should be, should be uh, let the legal process move forward, and I'd leave that up to President Bush. So and I, uh, I think he could go if, either if he, way on the that. The judge is going to rule in that case next month and decide whether he will be imprisoned during his appeal. Would you let it go? Let him be imprisoned at this point in time, and I'd leave that up to the president if, at the end of the term, he decides to let him. You out. know, Dr. Paul, do you want to pardon him? Uh, I, I, no, he doesn't need a pardon, but he he doesn't need it because he was instrumental in the misinformation that we led to Congress and the people to support a war that we didn't need to be in. Okay. Um, I asked about raising taxes. It was almost like the Reagan round here. Everybody <laughs> wanted to do that. I'm sure he was listening to that good thought. But let me ask you about something else that might be a negative in the upcoming campaign. Seriously, would it be good for America to have Bill Clinton back living in the White House? <laughs> Come on. I am known for sticking to principle and not flip-flopping. I voted to impeach him, so hardly do I want to in the White House. <laughs> let, me go, let me start with a question. In all seriousness, if you want to pass, please pass it. We don't have much time. Every president, if you look back to Ike, was elected to fill the problem of the previous president. We are, of course, correcting all the time in this country. It's how democracy works. How will you be different in any way from President George W. Bush? I certainly would continue on my earlier theme that foreign policy needs to be changed. Uh, Mr. Republican, Robert Taft, we have a statute of him in Washington. He advocated the same foreign policy that I advocate. I would work very hard to protect the privacy of American citizens, being very, very cautious about warrantless searches, and I would guarantee that I would never abuse habeas corpus. This is hardly the end of the 2008 presidential <laughs> campaign, or even the beginning of the end, but it is, to quote Winston Churchill, at least, the end of the beginning.